As designers, you are at the center of these network technology choices, with your holistic view on the context and the problem to be addressed, you know the key factors that should influence the decision. With the first lecture, we have the key questions to surface our list of network requirements. We will now land on some network technologies to connect requirements with network industry standards. We will also discuss the interoperability challenge and ways to deal with it. Throughout, we will refer to the names of some technologies as examples. Do not bother too much with their names. The terminology is more important. So exploring the different internet architectures, we saw that we can connect to a local IP network at home or on campus, but we can also connect to the IP network directly via cellular connection, the so-called 4G. Here, we have two IP wireless networks, but we have a major difference, the area that is covered. So let's briefly scan through different types of network areas, starting small with what we call body area network or BAN. These networks are designed for connecting devices on the human body. They are especially used for connected clothes like ANT technology. Personal area network or PAN reach out further. Such networks focuses on the person's workspace. A connected speaker via Bluetooth would be a good example. On the internet connected wheelchair, Bluetooth is also connecting the sensors from the wheel to the frame of the wheelchair. Then local area network or LAN is the next step covering up to a building. In this range, we also refer to home area network, HAN, or wireless LAN for VLAN, which simply emphasize the wireless property of the network as opposed to wired. The metropolitan area network or MAN is connecting lands together in urban areas at the scale of a large city. Wide area networks or one are designed to bridge the gap between lands, connecting urban areas together. Although in the wide areas, the LP1 for low power are especially designed for the Internet of Things enabling resource-constrained devices to send small amounts of data over a long distance. Okay, so beyond the areas, we have also the topologies. The Internet Protocol is mainly relying on what we call the STAR topology. A network topology is how devices of a network connect or relate to one another. For the star, all devices of the local network interact with a router which routes the traffic to its destination. Another device on the local network or the next router on the internet. It is a typical topology for a home internet-enabled environment. However, there are other network topologies. For connected products, you might encounter peer-to-peer, -peer, bus, or even mesh topologies. With peer-to-peer, -to -peer, two devices communicate via a direct link. On a bus, all devices connect to a common wire, the bus. A device sends a message on the bus, and all other devices receives it. However, only the targeted device read the message. An example are the bus can in cars or the C bus in building automation. With mesh, devices are connected to several devices of the network, so-called nodes. They can receive and transmit messages 
from and to these devices. Only the targeted device reads the message. Otherwise, the message is sent to the next devices. In IoT application, it is often used to connect low power devices across wide area, such as agriculture fields. For instance, sensors can send a message to its neighbor sensors, which will transmit the information further until reaching the destination. If all devices are connected to all the devices, then it is a fully connected network. How do we measure the performance of a network? There are several metrics. Bandwidth is the maximum amount of data a network can transfer in one second. It is a theoretical value. Throughput measures the network's actual data transmission rate, which can vary widely through different areas of the network. We already talked about latency. This is the delay that happens between the device requesting data and when that data is finished being delivered. Network availability, also known as uptime, simply measures whether or not the network is currently operational. And you can never guarantee 100% availability, but you want to be aware of any downtime that happens on the network that you were not expecting. With all requirements you faced in the previous video and the terminology covered so far, this represents an open field for many different standards, all with advantages and constraints. Some of these standards are open, others are closed with exclusive use or royalties. This creates the challenge of interoperability, the possibility to communicate from one device to another across different industry standards. There are three ways to address these challenges. First, via the cloud. This is the service-to-service -service internet architecture that we discussed in the previous module. In this case, APIs are used to bridge the gap. Locally, another solution is the multi-protocol gateway. A gateway translates from one protocol to another. So far, we've mentioned the translation into the internet protocol. Some gateways have also the ability to translate into other protocols, bridging the gap locally. Finally, some network technologies can be bridged at the transport layer. If you remember the four internet layers that we saw in the previous module. That's it for networks. We highlighted how to develop a list of network requirements in the Internet of Things context. We've introduced some networking technologies and highlighted the need for interoperable solutions to bridge the many network industry standards. I invite you to explore further through the book chapter 10 of Designing Connected Products, focusing on interoperability. The knowledge exercise for this week focuses on gathering information about network industry standards and surfacing the network requirements. Looking forward to your thoughts and reaction on this course. We'll discuss them there and we will see you on Thursday to highlight some themes.